Hello and welcome to lecture 66 of our course from data to decisions. I'm Chris Mack, your instructor. And in this lecture, we'll demonstrate a very simple principle in the design of experiments using R. And this will be an example that we talked about in the previous lecture. We're going to actually run some simulations to demonstrate uh, the principle. And the principle is, is the, the thing that's really open to us when we're designing an experiment. Most of the time, if we're looking at a particular regressor variable, predictor variable, we're asking how does it affect our response, we have already a range of that predictor variable that we want to run it over. Maybe it's constrained by um, the, the nature of the, the experiment, the equipment we use, or it's the only, the only range I'm interested in. But we have a range, and we generally already have given to us a number of data points. We can always make our statistics better for data, but data is expensive and time consuming, and so we generally have some limit. So we're going to assume that maximum values, the range over which we're varying the x variable, is given to us, it's fixed, and the number of data points is fixed. So what option is available to us in order to design our experiment? Well, the option is where we put the x values in the range x min to x max. Now, the most common thing that almost everyone does, that we all did when we were in lab classes and we see it in scientific papers and all the time, is evenly spaced data points within that range. It's called the space filling design. And uh, chances are we'll all continue to use that design over and over and over again. But it's not the only design. We can, we can put our data points in a non-even spacing. For example, the dumbbell design. I mentioned before that if we, in the lecture, that if we put all of our data at the minimum value, half the data, excuse me, at the minimum value and half the data at the maximum value, that it has different properties of the, of the regression. In fact, it will have a much smaller standard error, the slope, for example. We also mentioned a quadratic design where I put one third of the data points at the minimum, one third at the maximum, and then one third directly in the middle of the range of x values. So we're going to create some synthetic data, some simulations, and compare these three designs. So I'll begin with the x values. So we create three sequences of x values, x1, x2, and x3, I'll call them. x1 is a sequence from x min of 5, x max of 19.5, steps of 0.5. That's going to give me exactly 30 data points. So this routine sequence gives me evenly spaced x values. Now the dumbbell design here at x2, I'm going to repeat 5 15 times. So I'm going to do 15 data points all at the minimum of 5. Then I'm going to repeat 19.5 15 times so that I'll get 15 data points all at the maximum of 19.5. That will be my dumbbell design. And for my quadratic design, one third of the data points, 10 data points at the minimum, 10 data points at the maximum, and 10 data points right in the middle of that range. So I'll run that. Now we've got all three series of x values, all three experimental designs set up. Now I'm going to create my synthetic data, my synthetic response. Okay. First, I'll make sure n is the number of uh, data points I have. Sure enough, it's 30. And I will create 30 random numbers with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 using the R norm function. This will be the error in our data. So it will be the typical OLS assumptions of independent and identically distributed random normal errors. So I just created 30 random numbers. Now I'm going to create three different responses. One response will be for the first experimental design, y1, the second response for the second experimental design, y2, and the third quadratic design will be y3. Uh, so the, the model 
will be, or the, the actual behavior will be an intercept of three and a slope of one. So I will boom, 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 generate three sets of data, x, y, x1, x2, and x3. Now I can perform the modeling function using LM. I'll, do th I'll create three models. First one, y1 versus x1, then y2 versus x2, y3 versus x3. And I will get three models with three um, slopes and uh, intercepts and all the outputs of our models. Now, what I want to do specifically is to pull off the standard error of the slope for each of them. Well, the summary of the model has a standard error of the slope in a variable called coefficients. The coefficients is an entire table with the intercept as the first row and the slope is the second row, and then the coefficient itself is the first column, and the standard error of the coefficient as the second column. So that 2, 2 will give me the standard error of the slope. I do that for model 1, 2, and 3. And I've got my three standard errors of the slopes. You see them right there over here in the uh, global environment view. But I'm going to print them out down here in a format that's easier for me to see. So I have some cat commands that prints out to the console uh, in the format I want. All right, so I, I, I put out put two different things. First, the set of standard errors of the slope. For the dumbbell design, the quadratic design, and the even space design. Then I also output the, the standard errors of the residuals. In other words, the standard deviations of the residuals, each of those three designs. What do I see? Well, first of all, down at the bottom, the standard error of the residuals, well, they're all about the same. In other words, even though I've designed the experiment differently with evenly spaced or dumbbell or quadratic spacings of the x variables, the model fits are all about the same. Right? So the model fits the data, and there's residuals, uh, and the sum of the squares of the residuals take the square root. I have the standard error of the residuals. And they're all the same. They're, they're, I'm not getting a better model fit in the sense that my residuals are different. But because the data points have different leverage, I get different standard errors of the slope. What are the differences? Well, here I see the standard error of the dumbbell designs about 0.02, of the quadratic design about 0.024, and the even space design about 0.0328. Well, that's just one run, you know. I can run this a whole bunch of times, and every time I'll get slightly different values, but, but their ratios are about the same. The evenly spaced design has a standard error of the slope that's about the square root of 3 times bigger than for the dumbbell design. Right? That's the ratio. Square root of 3, that's about 70% larger. So... Another way of saying it, to get the same standard error for my even space design as I'm getting for my dumbbell design, I would have to use three times as many data points. Well, that's pretty significant, having to triple the burden of data collection to get the same standard error of the slope. Um, the quadratic design uh, is a little bit better. It, it's uh, three halves. So I only need to use 1.5 times as many data points to get the same standard error of the slope for the quadratic design compared to the dumbbell design. <clears throat> so while the uh, evenly spaced design is the worst, the quadratic design is somewhere in the middle, dumbbell design is the best in this very limited sense. So why doesn't everyone use the dumbbell design? Well, as we've discussed in the prior lectures, it's because you can't check your model. You can't see if your model is wrong or if there's any problem with your model using a dumbbell design. You can't see anything but a linear trend. With the quadratic design, you can at least differentiate between a linear trend and a quadratic trend. And if you assumed a linear trend, used a quadratic design, and showed that a quadratic model fit better than a linear model, 
a statistically significant difference, well, then that would give you some clue that maybe you've got the wrong model. Uh, but you can't see that if you only use the dumbbell design. So sometimes a compromise would be to use a quadratic design to fit a linear model and then check the model assumption using that center set of points. Even space design, well, it's good if uh, we have no clue what model is going to come out and we want to be ready for anything. But if you really do suspect the linear trend is what's going to come out, then you might consider a design other than evenly spaced. Well, that's my lecture. I have a lot more design of experiments yet to come.